الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان السلام عليكم my friends welcome back to another episode of the revelation audio experience can you feel the excitement in my voice today oh i'm excited i'm miraj muhideen today we're talking about the story of revelation and for those of you who have uh, had the patience to bear with me we have made it through the prologue so we've talked about everything that we could possibly talk about in a concise way building up to the first revelations in the quran now i know you want me to jump into that story but we have to do something really important we have to just take a step back and look at the whole story of Quranic revelation. I'm talking about the 23 years over which the Quran was revealed. Now, let me tell you that when I was writing my book, Revelation, very shortly into the process, I got completely overwhelmed by all the details that I was uncovering, especially when it came to the life of the Prophet. We're not even talking about the Quran right now. We're just talking about all the details in the 63 years of the life of the Prophet, peace upon him. I was totally overwhelmed. And while even though I was able to read through the material, I couldn't keep track of when things were happening and where things were happening and so forth. And so what I did uh, about seven years into my journey is I just stopped all of my research and I decided that I need to come up with some kind of schematic that would allow me to remember all the major events in the Prophet's life, peace be upon him, and come up with this schematic that would forever, from then on out, allow me to just always remember where things were so I could always place things in their proper um, location and not get confused anymore. And it took me three weeks to come up with this. And what I'm talking about, for those of you who have the Revelation book, this is probably... I, I think one of the coolest parts of the entire book, and it's the thing that I take away and hold on to most from this entire 15-year experience that I had writing the book, and that is the Quran Year Timeline. So the Quran Year Timeline, for those of you who are not familiar with it, it's kind of like the flex capacitor. Does that name sound familiar? Take a listen to this excerpt, and it might jog your memory. I was standing on the edge of my toilet, hanging a clock. The porcelain was wet. I slipped, hit my head on the edge of the sink. And when I came to, I had a revelation, a vision, a picture in my head, a picture of this. This is what makes time travel possible. The flux capacitor. Flux capacitor. So for those of you who remember the movie Back to the Future with Michael J. Fox, the DeLorean time machine had this really cool machine in the center console, which was called the flex capacitor. And this thing was basically the thing that kind of powered the car and enabled it to travel through time and go to any destination at any point. In the same way to me, the Quran Year timeline that I developed is the flex capacitor of Revelation, my book. It allows you to know everything that's happening in every single time period without getting lost too much in those details. It's this overarching timeline that allows you to see the themes of Revelation, the themes of the Quran, and match it to exactly what was going on, on the ground in the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. So in this episode, what I want to do is I want to go through that Quran Year timeline and explain to you how you can own that for yourself and hold on to that for the rest of your life. For those of you who are already very familiar with it, you know that this is an introduction of the Revelation book, and the entire book is structured around the Quran Year timeline, and so you're very familiar with that. Feel free to jump past this episode into the next episode where we start with Quran Year 1 and talk about the first revelation. But for the remainder of you, who I would imagine there's a lot of you out there who are not familiar with this, get ready to have your mind blown. Okay, so what I need you to do is is just take out a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen or a crayon or a marker, whatever you want, but have one blank clean sheet of paper in front of you. Noah, you need to go get that piece of paper. Okay, let me know when you're done. Okay, here we go. You have that paper in front of you and get a pen. And for those of you who actually know this, I would recommend you do this also because it'll refresh your memory. So what I want you to do now is take that paper and just put it in front of you vertically, like a regular piece of paper, notebook paper. And at the very top of the page, I want you to draw a line across the top of the page. That line is gonna represent a timeline of the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So on the, on the left side of the line, I want you to write zero, 
That's the moment he was born. And all the way at the far right side of that line, I want you to write 63 because he lived for roughly 63 years. So that line is the timeline of the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. Now, in that timeline, we already know from the previous episode that for the first 40 years, he was Muhammad ibn Abdullah. He had not received the first revelation. He was not a prophet yet. So from zero to 40, so let's just say that's roughly two thirds of that line. I want you to make a, a, a hash mark there, uh, a dash, or like cross that line and write 40. So that period of time was when he was pre-prophethood, I like to say. And if you want just for a little bit more detail, at a little less than half of his timeline, you can put another hash mark at 25 and say this is the moment when he got married to Sayyidina Khadija. So our timeline now has a couple of hash marks on it. We have zero, we have 25, we have 40, and then we have 63 at the very end. So the period of the Prophet's life, his life can be divided into two major parts. The pre-Prophethood period, which is 40 years, and then the period of Prophethood, which is 23 years. Now that 23 year period is really the period of Quranic revelation. Now what we do know from the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is that for most of his life, he lived in the city of Mecca. And he lived there until the persecution against him was so difficult because of his calling towards monotheism that he finally had to escape and go to Medina. And that moment is called the Hijra. Now, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, made the Hijra when he was roughly 53 years old. So what I want you to do now is make a line that's pretty much halfway between 40 and 63. Okay, and make that line. It doesn't have to be exact. We're just kind of getting a general scheme. And write 53, and then write Hijra next to that. So now we're seeing some major moments in the Prophet's life. What we can see from this chart is that he spent 53 years in Mecca, and only about 11 years in Medina. So this is a rough timeline of the Prophet's life, and this is what I was staring at for like over a week, trying to figure out how am I going to now start adding all the other events. So you know the ban years, and when he went to when he sent people to Abyssinia, and then also when you know certain revelations came down, when it was the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, the battles of Badr and Uhud and Khaybar, and all of these events. How am I going to understand this and remember it? And so what I came up with is a circular timeline. And this will make sense to you in just a second. So what I want you to do now on this page, now that we have that timeline at the top, and you understand that those 23 years are the period of the Quran, we're going to do a specific map called the Quran year timeline, which is basically a timeline of only those 23 years. So what you're gonna do is I want you to grab something circular. If you're in your kitchen or at your desk or so forth, grab like a small like, um, uh, a plate or like a bowl or something that fits nicely on this piece of paper in the middle of the page And I want you to trace that so you have a nice clean circle in the middle of the page Okay, so now that we have the circle what I want you to do is I want you to cut this into four pieces Imagine it's just a pizza in front of you. So you're gonna draw a line down through the middle of the pizza vertically and then you're gonna draw a line across horizontally so you have just cut it into four quadrants and make sure that the lines that you draw extend past the circle um, so that it just extends on all directions. Now what I want you to do is imagine that this is a clock. In normal clocks that you might have on the wall in your room right now, if you look at that clock, you can see that at the very top it says one, and then at the side it says three o'clock, then six o'clock, and then nine o'clock, and then back up to 12 o'clock. That's a typical clock and it's four quadrants. Well, imagine that this is a 24 hour clock. So in order to make it a 24 hour clock, we have to change the numbers a little bit. So looking at this circle, we are going to now from here on out refer to these four quadrants as one, two, three, and four. The first quadrant is in the upper right. The second quadrant is in the uh, lower right. The third quadrant is in the lower left. And the fourth quadrant is in the upper left. These are the four quadrants of this uh, timeline that we are creating. Now in the first quadrant, which is in the upper right, I want you to write one at the very top when that clock starts. And that's going to go from one all the way down to our six. So I want you to write a six right above the line in the first quadrant by the edge of the circle. Now in the second quadrant, I want you to write a seven 
under the line, just below the six, and that will go all the way to 12, which will be just before the bottom line. Then next to that 12, I want you to write a 13, which is the beginning of the third quadrant, and that will go all the way up to 18. And then above the 18, above that line, I want you to write a 19, and that should go all the way to 24, which brings you back up to the top of the circle. So now what we have here is we have a clock, okay? But this clock, like we said, is not hours, it's years. And each quadrant is six years. Quadrant one is one through six. Quadrant two is seven through 12. Quadrant three is 13 through 18, and quadrant four is 19 through 24, okay? So these, this right here is a timeline of the 23 years of Quranic Revelation. Now, what we need to do next is you have to remember the rule of the four H's. And this is actually very simple, okay? Four H's involved that will help break this clock into its major components. So what you need to do is you need to write four H's in very specific places. The first H will just go outside of the clock right above the number one that you wrote inside the clock, okay? So that H is at year one. The next H will go outside of the clock, all of these H's will be outside the clock, will be outside of the clock above the line right next to year six. The third H will go outside of the clock just under the number 13. And the fourth H will go outside of the clock just above the line on the left side right next to the number 19. So if you've drawn this correctly, what you will see is that the horizontal line going across has two H's, one on the left side above the line and one on the right side above the line at year 19 and at year six. And there's, you have one H that is corresponding to year one, and you have one H on the left side of the line corresponding to year 13. This is the rule of the four H's. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in these four H's because these are the cardinal four events that happened during the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad, which helped break down his, his, his story of Quranic revelation into four major parts. The first one, the first H, stands for the cave within which he got his first revelation. And the name of that cave is the cave of Hira. So I want you to fill that in, just write H-I-R-A, or just write I-R-A next to the H that you had already written. That is where he received his first revelation. And that moment kicked off the timeline of chronic revelation. Now, the next H that I want you to write is the one at the very bottom, at year 13. Like I said, he lived roughly half of the period of Quranic Revelation in Mecca until he had to escape to Medina, and that's known as the Hijra. So I want you to finish out writing Hijra using that H at year 13. Once that's done, what you see is that we have now created a basic schematic. On the right side of the circle, so quadrants one and two, they now represent the Meccan years, the period of time from year one all the way down to 13 where he was living in Mecca. Quadrants three and four represent the Medinan period. So that's the period of time where he was from year 13 all the way up to the top, 24, where he was in Medina. Now remember I told you the chronic period of chronic revelation was 23 years, not 24. Right now we have 24 years represented. So what I want you to do is just kind of make a hash mark about one uh, unit less than 24 and write 23 there, and that actually is more true to the actual timeline. So here what we're doing is we're creating a 23 year timeline, and you already know now, just based on this little thing, you'll always remember that the Meccan period is slightly longer than the Medinan period, but for the most part, it's almost 50-50 in how much time he spent in each place. Now what we're gonna do is fill in the other two H's. So the next H, which is the one that at the six o'clock position, and it's above the line, I want you to write an, uh, two names. And let me just set this up for you. When the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him was in Mecca and he started his revelation, he got a lot of oppression right away. A lot of, a lot of blowback, a lot of confrontation and so forth. And it was so bad that he, he made a prayer to God saying, I wish that I could just have certain people on my side who are really strong. That would, if I had their support, it would kind of just get everyone to back off. Okay, and he actually got exactly what he prayed for. And he got the help of two people who converted to Islam in the Meccan period. And when they came, it brought on a whole new period of strength for the Prophet peace be upon him during the Meccan period. And the two people who came to Islam are people by the name of Hamza 
and Omar. So that H right there at the six o'clock position above the line, I want you to fill uh, the rest of that in and write Hamza, H-A-M-Z-A, and Omar, U-M-A-R. So these two people converted in year six, and when they converted, it ushered in the second quadrant, the, period, the late Meccan period. So what is the other H, the final H that we did? Well, the final H, let me explain to you, is that when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, migrated to Medina, in that third quadrant, he got attacked relentlessly by the Meccans who would not just let him be. They came up from Mecca to Medina and continued to attack the Muslims. And it was just unbearable. It was just this constant annual fight until finally they, the Meccans realized that they really can't defeat the Prophet Muhammad and they were getting too worn out by all of these battles. And so the Prophet Muhammad met with the Meccan leadership that was left surviving and they came up with a treaty called the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. And so what I want you to write next to that H in 19 is Hudaybiyah. H-U-D-A-Y-I-B-A-H. Hudaybiyah. Hudaybiyah is a famous treaty that ended the period of fighting of the third quadrant. And it ushered in a period of peace where Islam could spread and grow and be established in the land, and that is the fourth quadrant. So, let's take a step back and look at what you guys have drawn, because this for you, I think it's going to be incredible for you to start understanding this. What we see here is that the period of chronic revelation is a 23-year period, and that 23-year period can be broken into four main quadrants. Each one is six years, six years, six years, and five years. The first six-year quadrant is the early Meccan period. It began with the Hijra, and it ended in year six with the conversion of Hamza and Omar. That period of time was a time that was marked by a lot of intense opposition against the Prophet Muhammad and a lot of individualized personal attacks against people who are following the Prophet, peace be upon him, and against the Prophet himself. What happened is in year six, when Hamza and Omar converted, it brought a level of strength to the Muslim community. The Quraysh who were antagonizing the Muslims realized that they can't just pick off individuals because there's too much strength there. So what we have to do now is just attack the entire group as one solid and mass block. And what they did is they actually persecuted the entire group. They actually banished them outside of Mecca in a hope to weaken them so that they would give up on the Prophet's message, peace be upon him. So if week, if quadrant one is a period of individual persecution, what we see in quadrant two is the late Meccan period. It's six years of organized persecution against all of the Muslims who are following the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So quadrant one, late early Meccan period, six years. Quadrant two, late Meccan period, another six years. Now, it got so bad, that organized persecution, that we know now that in year 13, the Prophet Muhammad and all of his companions fled. They escaped. They migrated to the city of Yathrib which later came to be known as Medina. And this ushers in the third six-year quadrant, which is the early Medinan period. The early Medinan period is um, best remembered for all of the battles. This is a period where you have the Battle of Badr, the Battle of Uhud, the second uh, attempted meetup at Badr. You have the Battle of the Trench, all the warfare, the major stuff that's going on, the major battles that are in the Quran and so forth happen in this third quadrant, the early Meccan period. Luckily, a lot of that fighting comes to an end because the two parties signed the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, which we know happened in the 19th year. And in fact, there is a surah in the Quran named Surah Al-Fat, the victory, which was revealed shortly after the signing of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, which told the Prophet, peace upon him, and his companions that this was a huge victory for the Muslims signing this treaty, even though on the outside it looked like, hmm, maybe the Quraysh got the best of us here. No, Allah reveals to the Prophet, indeed, we have given you a clear conquest. Fathun Mubin, this is the clear. Fatha is the, the victory, Mubin is clear, a clear victory. That Allah may forgive you for what proceeded of your sin and what will follow and complete his favor upon you and guide you to a straight path and that Allah may aid you with a mighty victory. 
إِنَّا فَتَحْنَا لَكَ فَتْحًا مُّبِيْنًا لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ وَيُتِمَّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكَ ويتم نعمته عليك ويهديك صراطا مستقيما وينصرك الله نصرا عزيزا. This was a huge, huge win for the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, and these verses were incredibly beloved to him and beloved to the companions. After 18 years of all of the trial and tribulation that they faced, Allah is now telling them. Here is your victory. And so the Treaty of Hudaybiyah happened, and that brought in a period of peace and prosperity to the Muslims in Medina, and it ultimately allowed them to establish Islam in the land. And that is the final quadrant, which is only five years, because remember, it goes up to year 23, and that is the late Medinan period. So how exciting is this, guys? How many of you understood the entire seerah in this broad overview? Now, this is what's happened. This is what's going to happen. And now you'll never get lost because you know exactly what's going on in each quadrant. You know the four major events that happened. And now you can start adding more details to this chart. Now, the question is this. Should we fill out the rest of the chart today? Or should we wait for the next episode? Hmm. So as much as I want to finish this today, I'm always concerned that I need to keep these episodes as short as possible. So uh, all of you don't feel intimidated when you see a 40 minute uh, podcast session. So what we will do in the next episode is we are going to fill out the 23 major events that happened in the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, here's the good news. You already know four of them, the four H's. So we only have 19 more to go. I have mnemonics for every single one. My plan, and I know this can happen because I've seen seven-year-olds do this, is that by the end of the next session, you guys will know 23 of some of the most important events that happened in the Prophet's life. And if you know this... This, I think, God willing, will set you up for incredible success when it comes to remembering, mastering the life of the Prophet Muhammad, and even more importantly, understanding the Quran in its revealed order and all the themes as they build sequentially, because remember what we're up to. Like Sal Khan said in the first episode, we are learning for mastery and we are learning for transformation. So anyway, if this is helpful for you, please let me know in the comments if this is working for you. I love reading your comments. I am so excited for the next episode. We're going to fly through that. You're going to master this material inside out, and it's going to be a new you after that. So feel free to share, like, subscribe. If you think other people might benefit from this, if you think the way I think and this is helpful for you, uh, feel free to let let me know in the comments. And and next episode is going to be even more exciting than this one because we're going to jump into finishing out what we are creating, which is the Quran Year Timeline. I will see you guys soon. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون أولئك أصحاب الجنة خالدين فيها خالدين فيها جزاء بما كانوا يعملون